Hello everyone. In this tutorial, uh, we will do the assemble for this. This will be the final result. And uh, we'll, for this, we will be using the tutorial 27, 28, 29, and 30. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so I go to solid work, click on new file, and select assembly, and click OK. Okay, because I know building a whole engine uh, is going to be just a basic animation. In the future, we will do a tutorial more advanced where we can show all the valves and more components. But for now, it's just going to be the piston, crankshaft, and the connecting rod. Okay, so because it's unnecessary building a block. I just built some reference line, for example, the axis of rotation for my crankshaft. So I will work on the top plane right here. Click here on normal view on this plane, and I will create a center line right here from the origin, an horizontal line right here. I Etsy the sketch. Now I click on the assembly tab insert component and I will insert first the crankshaft. I will open here and I will place right here. Because this is the first piece that I insert, usually the first piece they take it as a fix. That's mean I cannot move because usually you have to add the first piece it will be the base of everything. So to make it flow this, because the crankshaft needs to rotate, I right click on this piece and I click on the option that say float. Now I can move it. Okay, so my first constraint that SolidWorks called made, it will be made the center of this to the center of this axis. In case you build a, an old pen and you build uh, all the bearings for the crankshaft you just make made this part with whatever is going to rotate the crankshaft but in this case because i am not building the whole engine i will make to this axis so that will be my so i click here on made and i select this face or any rotational face right here and i select this axis and I click on the option concentric. That's mean that it will be concentric to that. Okay. Now, what I did is just my crankshaft. It will rotate, but also what I can see, it can move from back and forth. I can add another mate right here, this face, with this point. And I right click. Okay. That's mean that it's not gonna move. It just rotate now. My second step, what I will do, I will add the connecting rod, the piston, and all the bearings. So because it's going to be the same assemble for this point, this point, this point, and this point, I'm just gonna do a sub assemble, and then I will add that sub assemble to this assembly. So that's gonna be easier for me. So in a new file, I click and I create again a new assembly. Here, I will browse. So in case this window is closed for you, you click on assembly tab, insert component, and you're gonna look for the folder where you save. So it's going to be right now everything except the crunch. So I can select all of them at the same time. Remember that the first component that it will be added, it will be the one that is fixed. That's me in this case. If I need to drag the piston, it's not gonna move. So I can move this one, I can move all the components, but when I try to move the piston, it doesn't move because it was the first component to add. So it's something that you have to take in consideration. So if I want to move this one, 
I right click and click off the option that say float okay so I'm gonna join this with this and just to let you know I have some bad news uh, these shop drawings or these drawings were provided by one of us one of our students and apparently it's not gonna match correctly so we're gonna do some modifications right here okay so to match this with this we click on mate and then we select this circle and it's going to be concentric with this circle this bolt right here so I can uh, click uh, push S on my keyboard S and I have the same uh, button mate I will make this center hole with this center hole what I can see this is not correct and actually I was I had a question at the beginning about this uh, connecting road so what I'm going to do, I'm going to design this, redesign this pretty quick. I'm just gonna do this on half, and actually that's how usually are designed most of the connecting rod. So I prefer to continue with this, so here we can learn uh, modifying pretty quick. So if you wanna modify an assembly section, you right click here and say edit part. It's saying you have to first ascent, uh, save this assembly. We're gonna say yes. We're all saying component. So I'm gonna put piston soup uh, assembly. Okay. So now this means this is clear. That's mean I'm modifying this one right now. I just I I can open this separately. So I want to open, I click open part right here and it's going to open my components. So how can I edit this part right here? I want to make this in the center so I will uh, edit this sketch just to see where is the center. So the center is right here. That's mean I need to cut whatever is this part right here okay so what I can do is first this distance 9 millimeters is not from here it will be from here now Now what I can do, I can create a new sketch right here and I can make uh, just a rectangle bigger than this, click on fissure, a true cut and it will be until this point right here. Now this is cut in half okay I can save this now I will do the same with this part with the bottom part I open this part and what I will do let me see what is the center of this so if I go to the original sketch, this is the center right here. That's mean this is upper, so I need to cut this part. So what I will do is I right click here, select new sketch, and I will convert entities this, convert entities this, clip feature, a stroke cut, and up to surface and until here I save this part as it and yes now this will match perfectly as you can see 
And actually, this is how usually works the connecting rod. Other detail that I look at right here, in case you want to repair or not, it will be this. This doesn't make sense. Because if you suppose that you have a I'm going to uh, click here and say this is transparent. If this is supposed that it goes a bolt, this bolt is going to make contact right here with the bearings. So this is supposed to be thicker right here. So I can edit that pretty quick. I'm sorry that I didn't check these plans before I start working on, but it's something that we can learn. If you never made mistakes, you're never gonna learn. So I can cl right click, open new part, and I will, I can choose, click on edit a sketch, and what I will do is I will put the distance probably 15 millimeters and exit the sketch. Now this is perfect because the cutout hole is not going to interfere with my bearings. So I can exit this part, exit. You say that it's giving some errors with the mates, that's okay. You can delete those mates. Okay, now I will edit this one as well. So I open this part and go to the main sketch. The sketch that I will need to edit for this one, it will be this one right here. So this distance is equal to 50. And I exit this part. And I can save and go back. Say, do you want to update? Yes, I can add again my mates. This is concentric to this, and this hole it will be concentric to this hole. Now, everything much perfect. Now, I'm going to add uh, this uh, bearings which goes right here so let me check something right here if I click on measure this dimension let me pass this to millimeters this dimension is equal to radius 33 and this dimension is equal to radius let me see 31 that's mean that this need to be updated as well so I will put for now 33 and 31. So here I can edit this sketch. It will be uh, 33, it's equal to 66. And 31, it's equal to 62. I can exit this sketch. Save. Go back. It's going to say you want to update? Yes. I can also edit this one. It will be the same dimensions. Right click on this sketch, edit, uh, edit sketch 66 and 61. Edit, exit the sketch, save. Click exit. You want to update? Yes. Hmm, not so perfect. Uh, I think I made a mistake on this one, so I will edit again. Uh, this is right 62. Hmm. So it will be this one. Uh, this is 62. Save, exit, update. Now it's perfect. I have to add this period as well right here. 
so I click on assembly mate this part and it will be this circle to center it I click again on mate advanced mate click on width option and I will select both sides of this and I can select this side and this side so with this tool now this piece is perfectly centered okay now I will make sure that this circle fits with this one so I press on S on my keyboard select on the measuring tool this diameter is equal to 35.6 this diameter it's equal to 36 so I can either chain this or chain this I will chain this so right click open this part and on this sketch right click edit sketch and input the value of 36 go back we save the piece and now it should be updated if it's not updated you can click here where you say rebuild okay now this I can click on mate select this circle and select this circle I can center it again advance mate click on width it will be this face this face this face and this face also there is a problem here as we can see because the distance from here to here is equal to uh, 36 millimeters so let's see how much is the distance so I can click here, edit feature, and the distance is 38. I can reduce this to 36 millimeters. Save, go back, and now it match perfectly. So this is a good about solid work. If you made a mistake, you can fix it. Compared to AutoCAD or other software you have to start from the beginning if you cannot move this with the left click you can press the right click and you will be able to rotate now the last piece to be inserted it will be this one okay so let me check here is supposed that goes this piece which is a pin that keep lock all these two components in place so from here to here it should be on till here because here is supposed to be a locking system that doesn't allow the pin that go out so I can measure from here to here that distance is equal to 66 millimeters let's see from here to here it's equal to uh, 75 millimeters that's mean this is too long so I open this part click on a strut option and this distance is equal to 66 click OK also I will edit this chamfer a little bit so I have a little straight face this is not realistic right here I will put 2.5 and I will click OK I will select two. So now I have a little lip here which is more realistic. There you go. You want to update the assembly? Yes. Now I can click made, made this part with any of this center and I will click on mate, advanced mate, and with to make a center so I will select this part right here I will select this face I will select 
this face and this face. Now this piece is all centered. Now this two assembly is ready to be inserted in the other assembly. So I make sure I save this file. Save. And now I can go to my crankshaft. And I click on insert component. I browse and look for the piston to assembly. And I can insert it here. Okay, so my next step will be insert the block here. Insert it here. And the objective is placed on this center right here, perfectly centered. So it's going to match with the center of this, and the piston can run up and down. Okay, so I'm going to add, I'm going to open again this part, and I'm going to create a new sketch right here to have some reference. I click on Convert Entities, Strip Option, and I want to strip 5 millimeters, just to have a flat surface so I can align in the in the assembly. By the way, this is just going to be to show the movement. It doesn't have any function. So I can click on Mate, on Advanced Mate, click on Width, and I can select this face this face, this face, and this face. So now it's all centered right there. And I just had to worry about the height. The height, I can put something there. I'm gonna rotate this piece a little bit so I have an estimate height right here. So maybe something like this. So I can right click here and click on fix. When it's fixed, it cannot move. Okay, so my last step, now I have to make this circle right here with this one, this one, this one, and this. Okay, so let me double check, click on S. And this diameter is equal to 62. And this diameter is equal to 64. So I will change this one. Right click, open new part. And this will be, I can edit this sketch and change this sketch to 62. So that's why I recommend seeing all the tutorials. As you can see, if you have any modification, I always try to design so you can change at the end. Actually, I kind of made this on purpose so you can see when you design and draw in this way, you can always do some modifications even if you have some problems at the end. So I click save, open, uh, exit the crankshaft. Now I can make, add the mate this it will be concentric to this I can add another mate center it so I click advanced paint with and I select for example this to face and this to face now that's mean that it will be centered and my last uh, mate it will be this is concentric with this so click mate this will be concentric to this now when I try to rotate it doesn't move why because when you import a sous assembly it doesn't import the, the sous assembly as a flexible so you have to change that. So go to the sous assembly, right click, and click on the part that say component properties. Now uh, the only thing would be just add uh, the rest of the piston. 
which because they have the same mate I can say some time uh, I right click here and select the option that say copy with mate so it's already select the component paste it to assembly and I click next now I say uh, match uh, this mate and it's highlighted right here so I just have to select this one right here now we say with if it's uh, center it so it will be this part and this part and it say add a tab reference will be this so now it's center and the third mate will be the piston right here It's a component has been placed. Press OK to place another component. So I click OK and I do the same. Right here. This face. This face. It could be this part right here. Visible right here. Okay, I took it and now concentric to this. I add another one, it will be this part right here, it will be centered right here. center it those faces and the last relation will be this I just click cancel for now oh I delete the last one I'm sorry I have to click OK so I just can't do it again This part right here, tab reference, this, this, center right here, and this part right here. Okay, now I can click cancel. Okay, now as you can see, our exercise is done, all the assemble. If I move manually, it will rotate perfectly. Right here. Okay. Okay, so we will do a basic animation right here to see uh, how this uh, does it work. So we click here on tap motion steady and we're going to add a motor. So we're going to add a motor here that automatically uh, make a rotation on the crankshaft and cause the pistons going up and down. So click here where it says motor component and it says select component. So you're going to select, you can choose this one, this one or whatever is uh, needs uh, rotation. So in this case, I will put the motor right here I will put a constant speed, uh, 20 RPM. You can play it with all these uh, all these options. It's up to you. Depends if you're doing any prior or something like that. And then I click OK. Now, whatever seconds I put here, I can move my keyframe. It will be whatever is going to be rendered. So if I click play this will load from here to here and then I can play smoothly at the end okay after the 10 seconds is done you just click here on play and you're going to see this movement from whatever end
triangle you need. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you liked my video and see you next time.